So imagine this. After finishing up a thorough training session with her Pokemon, Nimona feels ready to challenge her rival for probably the 10th time that day. Though in her excitement, she completely forgot to eat, and now her hunger is becoming overwhelming. Worse yet, she doesn't have any time to stop at any of the varied restaurants across Paldea because she can feel her rival had just finished battling another major figure. So thinking quick, she opts into the fastest option available, heading directly to the nearest McDonald's and ordering herself a Big Mac. Yet, even more unfortunate luck strikes as their automatic card reader is not functioning that day and she'll have to pay for her burger in physical currency. Now she needs to figure out how many Poke Dollars does Nimona need to buy a Big Mac. So, before we can answer this question, we should first figure out three important things. Firstly, what exactly is a Poké Dollar? Secondly, is there anything that is priced in Poké Dollars that we can buy in the real world now? And finally, what time period does Nimona live in so that we can properly determine the price of a Big Mac? And we'll have to dig through a lot of the series to find these answers, so let's begin right away with the most important part, the currency itself. Now that we've reached this point, I should address something about Poké Dollars. This of course being something that probably a few people have already commented about below, but if you didn't know, the term Poké Dollars, or Pokémon Dollars, is almost entirely a Western creation, as the money you earn in battles from from the Japanese version of the game is just called Yen. It is labeled using the character for Yen and not the symbol, but is implied to be the standard Japanese currency, which likely means the name Poké Dollars is a translation decision to give the English release a more universal appeal, with the name itself also likely being a play on the term Pocket Change, which is what the wallet for the player character is referred to as in the Japanese game, similar to how Pokémon is a breakdown of pocket monsters. So realistically, you could just say Poké Dollars are Yen and end the segment here. But where's the fun in that? And plus, the Colosseum and Gale of Darkness games both use the Western Poké Dollars and its symbol to represent the money that the player earns. So there is some arguments to be made that Poké Dollars do exist in some small way. Now, what a Poké Dollar really looks like isn't exactly clear, as almost all instances of Poké Dollars are coins be it the comics, Pokemon Go's in-game currency, and of course Scarlet and Violet's reward screen. The Poké Dollar is also seemingly a global currency, as we've seen it used in every single region in the series, which means that it is likely minted out of a precious metal. Though which metal was selected is likely unknown, but what we do know is that the metal chosen must be the same type of material that some Pokemon use to do moves like Payday, as there are attacks in the game that can create legal tender completely out of nothing. Though, if I had to take a guess at what type of metal was being used to make Poké Dollars, I would say that gold is a very strong choice. As not only is it one of the most commonly minted metals, it is also all over the world of the series, as you discover little nuggets of gold throughout your adventures and can sell them for a hefty sum. As well, to slightly back up this theory, the animation for moves like Payday often depict the Pokémon throwing or using a Koban coin, which is a Japanese golden coin used mostly throughout the Edo period. So, it's very possible that these creatures are accomplishing an alchemist's dream and spawning gold from nothing. Now, it's also just as possible that Payday is just your Pokémon has collected coins without telling you, and they just decide to throw it at someone just because you told them to. It's a weird move just in general, because you just spawn money out of no Anyways, I'm getting sidetracked. Now, interestingly enough, while there are other Poké Dollar generating attacks in these games, not all coins made by Pokémon are the same. And a perfect example of this is found in Scarlet and Violet with the Gimagool coins, which, while looking similar, aren't valued the same as Poké Dollars, but instead they are their own special thing that sell for their own special value. As well, there doesn't seem to be any form of paper note currency in this world, which I guess makes sense as it was originally supposed to reference pocket change that kids would carry around while they went out exploring, but the games do seem to have some sort of universal bank that keeps track of all of your deposited earnings. 
That or you just have your mom. Now, with the currency of the world of Pokemon being mostly understood, I think we should start to look for our exchange rate to help narrow down how much one Poke Dollar is worth in real world currency. So I'll be doing the exchange rate into USD, mainly because it's the currency I'm the most familiar with. Now, I believe the best place to start looking when it comes to finding this exchange rate would be the items that you can purchase throughout your journey in the games. Now, the first place I would check is, of course, the healing items, and more specifically, fresh water, soda, and lemonade. Now, while it would theoretically be possible to use these items to determine some sort of general value for a Poké Dollar, as they all do exist in our world, we don't exactly know the specifics of the water bottle, lemonade, or soda brand being used in these references. In fact, there's a little bit of discrepancy between generations. Firstly, the freshwater item varies between the series as to whether or not it's canned or bottled. As well, it is described as being notably high in mineral content, so it is likely a more luxurious water brand and not your average water bottle. Then of course you have the soda item, which started out as a canned beverage, which might be easy to track down, but in more modern renditions it has become a ramené bottle, which of course means its cost can vary vary significantly depending on a variety of things, let alone the flavor. And then finally you have lemonade, which some kids sell on the street for like 25 cents, like this isn't a useful metric at all. So I don't think using these items will be as helpful as I might have first hoped. Honestly, this would be a lot easier if we had an item that existed first in the Pokemon universe and became available in our world. Wait a minute, what's that? That's right, the Poké Doll. This is one of the best items to use for the conversion rate, as not only is the Poké Doll a Pokémon World original, being a doll based on a Clefairy specifically, as the item's name in Japanese is the Pippi Doll, with Pippi being the original Japanese name for Clefairy, but also, while there might be a number of different Clefairy-based merchandise and images and plushies to work off of, we have an official version made by the Pokémon Company itself of the Poké Doll, this being the Special Editions Lily's Clefairy Plush, only found at Pokémon Center stores during the month of June in 2017. Now, according to the Poké Vault, this plushie costs roughly $35, or around 4,000 yen at the time of 2017. Though, due to their limited release and only being available now through resellers, it has been upcharged to nearly double their normal price, which is all too fitting of the real Poké Doll, as the Poké Doll normally costs a thousand Poké Dollars in the Japanese-centric regions of Kanto, Johto, Hoenn, and Sinnoh. Though, in Unova, a region mostly based on America, the doll only exists in Black City, and its price is 18 times that of the normal value. And it is sold based on an individual, specifically Jacques the Scientist. Though, weirdly enough, in Galar and Paldea, these regions have polka dolls, and they're actually cheaper than the standard price that we've seen throughout the series with both regions listing the Poké Doll for 300 Poké Dollars. Which means for our specific example, I'll be working with the Paldea region's doll's conversion rate, but I'll also find the normal conversion rate from the other games. So, if roughly a thousand Poké Dollars is worth $35 USD, that means one Poké Dollar is equivalent to roughly three and a half cents. Though, as I mentioned, this number won't help Nimona, as she lives in a region with a much different conversion rate. So instead, let's convert 300 Poké Dollars to 35 USD, as the doll is unchanging in the real world. Which, if I round up a bit, one Poké Dollar is equivalent to roughly 12 cents USD. Which means, between the times of the first games and the most recent one, the Poké Dollar has experienced a deflation of nearly four times their initial value. Now, all this math, while being interesting, would also be somewhat worthless to us if we didn't know a time period to work with, so we knew how much Nimona had to pay for her Big Mac. And luckily, 
thanks to quite a few sources of information throughout the series, we can nail down a general time frame. Though first, we need to pay a visit to Pewter City's museum. Now we are given the foundation for some of the most important evidence for our timeline, as it is a man in here who tells us about July 20th, 1969, the date of the first lunar landing. This of course is in reference to the Apollo 11 mission in the real world, but also means that events of our real world happen to coincide with events in the Pokemon world, and allow us to build a general timeline of events. Though next, we need to move on to another groundbreaking date, this of course being 1995, as according to the Pocket Monsters Encyclopedia, this is the year that the virtual Pokemon, Porygon, was created. This is of course important because it means that every game in the series needs to be set sometime after 1995, at least games that allow you to capture Porygon, as Porygon is also important because in Sun and Moon we learn it's been about 20 years since the creation of Porygon, setting the events of that game in roughly 2015 to 2016, which of course coincides with the release of the games themselves, meaning that each game, unless the events specify otherwise like with Gen 3 and take place roughly the year of their release. As well, we can determine that Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow take place roughly in 1996 due to Red, the protagonist, aging about 19 years for his appearance in Sun and Moon, which means that we now have a bit of a time period to work with to determine the amount of Poke Dollars that would be needed to buy a Big Mac using the Poke Doll conversion rate. And to think, all of this data wouldn't be possible if not for the existence of Porygon. Thank you, friend. Your crimes have been fully forgiven is what I would be saying if I was a big Pika-believing Mare Reeple. Porygon wasn't even the one who gave all those kids the seizure. It was Pikachu and his lightning that caused the flashing. Yet he goes and buys these expensive corporate lawyers to quickly slap the blame on an innocent Polygon monster just to protect their marketable image. Pikachu, you know what you did that day, and you can't run from it forever. And if you want to help bring justice to Porygon, well, we have a group that meets under the Marvelous Bridge, and the password is Six Semper Tyrannus. Now, working under the logic of release year coinciding with the in-game year, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, as well as Nimona, exist roughly in 2022 to 2023, and that makes getting a Big Mac price way easier, as the average cost of a Big Mac now, in the US, is $5.17. Though, Paldea isn't based on the United States. Instead, its inspiration actually comes mostly from Spain, so we will be working with the price of a Big Mac in Spain, which comes out to roughly 7.15 euros, or roughly $7.80, as of 2023, which means that Nomona would need roughly 65 Poke Dollars under this Poke Doll standard to get her food. Though, what if we really went with Scarlet and Violet's theme and we traveled back in time to Red and Blue in 1995 to 96, where a Big Mac cost only roughly $2.30? Though, much like how Paldea is based off Spain, Kanto is based off a region in Japan, which the cost of a Big Mac then was roughly 390 yen, meaning that Red would actually need somewhere in the ballpark of 66 Poke Dollars to buy a Big Mac. Which is kind of crazy when you think about it, as Ultimately, the Polky Dollar doesn't seem to have that much of a drastic change in buying power throughout roughly 28 years. Outside of some niche scenarios, Namona is paying about the same that Red did back when he was 11. Which is only partly true as this actually just ended up being a very fun coincidence in the video making process. As if we do the math now, say Nimona was to buy a Big Mac using modern Japanese prices of 415 yen, she would only be paying roughly 26 Poke Dollars, as opposed to her 65 in the Spanish cost. Whereas if Red was to buy a Spanish price Big Mac from 1995, he'd be paying roughly 85 instead of his 66. This, of course, to me just says that Paldea just has a stronger economy, more so than Kanto or any of the other Japanese regions of Pokemon. But even as region prices changes, the Big Mac does still remain ever affordable in that universe. 
Also, side note, back to Nomona, why is plus twoing just allowed in the Pokemon card game? And if you like this video and want to see more videos like in the future, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash guy. And if there's any specific currency that you want to see me cover in a future video, please let me know in the comment section below. I know I've got a couple of them. I have like rupees from Zelda, which that'll be fun. I'm also looking into Gil from Final Fantasy. Hopefully I can find some interesting correlations. Final Fantasy, I think I'm going to just have to pick one of the numbered entries and go with it. So we'll see how that plays out. As well, if you want something to fill your soul instead of your stomach, you can buy a copy of Shimonetta, a boring word of the concept of dirty jokes doesn't exist at buyshimonetta.com.